If you really love this character, why don't we take a second and actually go through everything she has to offer, the entirety of her kid, and derive from that her optimally efficient playstyle instead of trying to stuff her into roles where she simply will not function to her full potential. If we do that, very quickly do we discover a couple of things, and those are that primarily she is not a pyro-abusing, melt-proccing, 360 no-scope headshot bot, she is not a Deluke or Klee slave, she is also not a slot 1 cryo main DPS unit, she has nothing to do with superconduct, and she's definitely also not a physical carry herself, but she's also not just a support. Now this doesn't mean that she can't fulfill any of these roles, and of course you can totally use her for any of the above, but let's at least recognize what she was made for to begin with before we pull her and then get disappointed later, because for all the roles I just mentioned, we have better alternatives already and she's not gonna be able to compete with them. She has a very well-defined niche in which she shines brighter than any other unit we have, and we're going to figure out exactly what that niche is and why. So let's go ahead and debunk some of the theories that have been floating around for the past couple of days. The headshot bot and abusing Pyro. Even if you set her up with Bennett and apply Pyro to everyone, doing melt headshots cannot be her primary purpose because we already have Child who does a way better job at that. Cryo onto Pyro gets a 1.5 multiplier, whereas Hydro onto Pyro gets a multiplier of 2. And you could look further than that, but you really don't have to. Because no matter how high her base attack is, no matter how hot her horns are, she's never gonna beat a 33% total damage increase that you would get simply for using a Hydro unit instead. The rest of her kit also doesn't fit that playstyle whatsoever because it would interfere with consistent pyro application and you'd have severe performance issues. So what about the other way around then? As a Klee or Deluxe slave for huge melt damage? Now I'm gonna be honest here and say, I'm not a pyro player. I don't have Deluke or Klee. I don't know the trouble of not having a reliable source of cryo application. So for all I know, with her ult and stuff, Ganyu could very well be the best consistent melt reaction enabler we have to date. So if you want to enslave her, go ahead. But the point is, from her perspective, that's not her best role. Because her A1 reduces cryo resistance, not pyro resistance, and her A4 grants cryo damage and not pyro damage. So again, by design, she was not intended to be a pyro slave. Okay, now comes the big one. So, since she boosts cryo damage that much, let's use her as a main DPS herself then. All problems solved, isn't that great? Well, no, it's not. And the reason is that all of her skills work just fine, even without her being on the field. And this is always true and has always been true in this game. If a character has skills that function even if that unit leaves the field, it was not meant to be a main DPS. Take any typical main DPS that we have right now. Razor, Deluke, Child. None of those units do anything for you if they're not on the field. They're selfish, attention-seeking bastards that don't care about the rest of your team. They don't care. But they can get away with it because they deal huge damage. And that's what makes them main DPS units. They demand field time because their kit doesn't allow for it to be any other way. Now Fischl, for example, she's a good main DPS. We all know that by now. She's a very solid main DPS option, especially for free-to-play players. But even Fischl mains know, yes, I'm talking to you, even though you love main DPS Fischl gameplay, you love listening to Uchidamaya's sexy voice, even you know that Fischl is always going to have greater potential as a sub-DPS. Because half the things she does she keeps doing even if she's not on the field. And it's going to be the exact same with Ganyu. Now before we talk about her charge shot, don't worry, I will get into that. Another thing to think about is, if you really wanted to make full use of her kit just by using her alone, that would basically require you to stay within her own ultimate throughout its duration for the 20% cry damage bonus. Now where does it make sense to design her as a bow character who's all about gaining distance with her E and then using both her Q and charge shot at range, ideally with an Amos bow that they're trying to sell us as well, that scales with range, just to then force her to walk right back into her ultimate to keep benefiting from those 20% cryo damage. It doesn't make sense. With Ganyu, you press E, you press Q, both stay active, even if you swap out, and then it doesn't make sense to keep her on the field, even if you could now proceed to spam charged shots. Now you do want to do one charged shot, because that one gives a 15% cryo resistance debuff to all enemies. But after that, it's simply more efficient to swap to another dedicated cryo DPS unit that still has both E and Q up, 
or at the very least deals insane damage with auto attacks, which Ganyu, by the way, doesn't and never will, because her normal attack multipliers are abysmal. It doesn't matter that she's cryo and has easy access to superconduct. It doesn't matter that they changed her ascension bonus from cryo damage to crit damage. You cannot really scale physical damage with her because you'd be wasting pretty much all of her kit for a poorly performing physical DPS bow unit. She has worse multipliers than Fischl, even though Fischl is a 4 star, and much worse multipliers than Child, and even he is never played as a physical DPS, because again, you'd be wasting all of his kit. You're never going to see her auto attack animations. I know in the trailer they look really nice and everything, but just like Venti and Child, you're not gonna see them. And because we were just talking about Superconduct, she's also not a Superconduct enabler for somebody else. Because if you need Superconduct, then you're playing a melee electro unit Except if you play Fischl, but we've already established that that's not the best use of Fischl, and you could still use Diona for that instead of an expensive 5 star. In all other scenarios you're going to have a melee unit like Razor, and then Kaya is really all you need. He's free, he does the job just as well, he's amazing at proccing Superconduct, so sure you can use Gaiu, but she doesn't add anything that Kaya doesn't already have. And now her charge shots. Well, here's the thing. Imagine you press E, then you press Q, then you do a charge shot. You stand there for two seconds, you release, and boom, wonderful burst damage. Hits everyone around your flower thing, and now their cry resistance is reduced. Would you now swap to Ayaka and go ham with your E and Q abilities that are still up, and after that your cryo-infused auto attacks and whatnot? Or would you rather keep Ganyu on the field, press R to go into aiming mode, and repeatedly shoot charge shots? that take two seconds each to charge up. You're in aiming mode, you cannot run, you cannot dodge, you don't see anything much that's going on around you, you don't see ice cages popping up from the ground for example, you don't know what's going on behind you, you're stuck in this animation. And then how long are you gonna do that? Just forever? Just every two seconds you press left click and you do a charge shot. Now, a quick side note, as a C0 child player, in the beginning everybody was hyped and said, oh you know what? you can just cover your downtime for not having C6 with charge shots. They apply Riptide, they deal Hydro damage, nice AoE damage, nobody does it. Everyone with a C0 child has accepted by now that you're either running with a babysitter who can take over his main DPS whenever he's on cooldown, or you run some form of quick swap team with very short cooldowns on all team members where you can fill child's downtime with enough elemental skills and bursts from your other three units. Because walking around shooting aimed shots isn't really fun and it's never gonna deal as much damage as just swapping to somebody else. And even though Ganyu's multipliers are nice, her base attack is high and every charge shot comes with a bunch of AoE, it's still going to be true even for her. Swapping to another unit that still has all of its kit available is always going to be better damage. Her charge shots may seem really cool and unique and fresh right now, but when it comes to spamming those, for two seconds each. I wouldn't be surprised if that became quite boring really really fast. Okay, but whatever. So, now you're still thinking, well, but then what are we gonna do with her charge shot? If we can't keep her on the field, wh what's the point of it? Isn't that her unique, defining gameplay mechanic? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you're absolutely right. And that's exactly what we have C6 for, don't we? So let's take a look at our beautiful C6. Using Trail of the Chili causes the next Frostflake arrow shot within 30 seconds to not require charging. Now when I saw this in the beginning, I was thinking to myself, hell yeah, I'm not even missing out on that much for not going for C6, because I'm gonna be here spamming her charge shots all day and all night, and like getting one of those without charging it up every 5 to 10 seconds isn't really a game breaker, right? Well, if you're thinking that, then sadly you still haven't understood her kit. It's C6. Mihoyo knows better than anyone else that her kit is not about spamming as many charge shots as possible. Think about it, if that were the case, why would they give us a C6 as tiny as this one, that's even locked behind using her E, which isn't even up all the time, instead of giving us something like Diona's C4. Diona's charge time for aimed shots is reduced by 60%. Now that would have been an insane C6 for Ganyu, don't you think? If her purpose was to spam charge shots, which it isn't. It wouldn't make sense, right? Why can't Diona and C4 have something like this? And Ganyu, a 5-star character, gets one free shot at C6? 
It just doesn't make sense. They gave us one shot that doesn't need to be charged at all, but only one for every E that we cast, because they know that her kid is very much about swapping into Gaiyu, pressing E to taunt all enemies, pressing Q to shower them in ice, doing one charge shot for great burst, yes, and to reduce their cry resistance, and then swapping back out again. Because then you're done with her kit, you're done. You cycle through everything. Her Q is down, her E is down, her auto attacks are useless, and her charge shots just aren't worth it past the first one that reduces cryo resistance, because two seconds is a long time. Time in which you cannot react, or sprint, or dodge, or fart, and because even though her frost flake damage isn't bad, it's good. The opportunity cost of not just using another unit during that same time window is simply still too great. And so the first charge shot, the one that applies the cryo resistance debuff, that's the one you get for free if you drop a couple thousand and you get C6. And then you do all of her combo in like 3 seconds, let's say, including her ultimate animation time. 5 if you don't have C6. And that's where she shines. She sets up and deals amazing damage for how little field time she requires, both burst damage and damage over time. And now you swap back to Ayaka, who I think will be the absolute best pair with her. Everybody's weakened, they're taunted, they're taking damage over time that increases the longer they stay in the ultimate if you have C4. And as long as you're in the circle too, you gain another 20% cryo damage. So if you're interested in Ayaka, I'd say go ahead and pull her just for Ayaka, because they're going to be an amazing pair together. And then you go ahead and slot in Xingqiu in slot 3 for the perma freeze and some healing. Maybe the reason why he's on her banner, who knows. And then slot 4, whatever you like. And that's how I think she'll be used optimally. She'll be an excellent sub DPS that shines in a double cryo comp with another dedicated cryo main DPS you need to go with. And that is going to be Ayaka very very soon. Right now we only have Chongyun who isn't all that amazing as main DPS and the problem with Kaya is that you kinda have to run him with Chongyun together for him to work as a main DPS but as soon as Ayaka comes out nobody is going to ever look at Kaya again as an option for Cryo main DPS. Ayaka herself is going to replace the Kaya Chongyun duo because she can infuse her own attacks with Cryo and then it's going to be Ayaka and Gaiyu, the perfect core for a Cryo oriented DPS comp. They both benefit from the cryo resonance, free crit rate for both of them. Ganyu won't have to build energy recharge at all because Ayaka is going to fund her with her short cooldowns and because they share the same element. And then you can go ahead and build Ganyu for pure damage and dish out ridiculous numbers for how little field time she requires. So yeah, don't give her an energy recharge bow, please. All you have to do is run her with a cryo main DPS. Maybe you get a bit of energy recharge on a few substats here and there and you're going to be good. She's made to deal damage. You're not gonna get that with an ER bow. But that doesn't mean she was also made to be a main DPS. Think about a well-built Fischl. She deals insane damage and you never even see her. She appears for a second or two and then she's gone again. And Ganyu is going to be exactly like that. But the problem is that that playstyle is locked somewhat behind C6. Because for a swap in, swap out unit, the difference between refreshing your flower with your E and doing a 2 second charge shot and pressing E and getting that charge shot off almost instantly is huge. Most of your field time during that swap will be consumed by your charge up animation that takes 2 seconds. Now on paper it doesn't sound like much but it easily doubles the amount of time you have to stay on the field for her to do her thing. So what does that mean for her gear? The best set? For her, it's going to be the Neo Cryo set because she unfolds her full potential in a Cryo, preferably a Perma Freeze Cryo comp. That way she gets 15% crit rate from the Resonance and another 40% from her set as long as you keep your enemies frozen. Wanderer's Troop is a trap, Elemental Mastery in general is a trap because again you're not melting headshots because she's not gonna be able to compete with Child who does the same thing way better at the same level of investment. You're not doing superconduct with her and freeze in and of itself doesn't deal damage. So elemental mastery is completely wasted on her. Stringless is completely wasted on her because not only are you throwing away a second stat, you're also throwing away her charge shot damage that she is supposed to use, yes, but once to reduce cryo resistance. And then again when the pack in front of you is dead or whenever you want to refresh the flower or the cryo debuff. No earlier than that. And that's why this one shot is C6. So yeah, energy recharge. If you do run her with Klee or Diluc, you will have to invest in energy recharge to get her ult back up. But that's why you don't do that, because it gimps her damage output tremendously. 
And if you run her in a cryo comp, you can go pure damage and your other cryo DPS is going to fund her just fine, without ER. For damage options, you have both 5-star weapons. Amos Bow may actually be better for her than Skyward Harp, but I'll leave it to someone else to do the math on that one, so to be honest, I don't really know right now which one of these is going to be better. And then for 4 stars, Rust doesn't exist for this unit because you're not doing normal attacks. Compound Bow doesn't exist because you're not doing physical damage. Battle Pass Bow seems actually great. A mini Skyward Harp. The passive is great for her not on the field that much playstyle. Stringless is a no. ER is a no. Prototype Crescent is actually the very best free-to-play option for damage. It's an amazing bow for her, great stats, great passive. Black Cliff War Bow. I think you have to be the one doing the last hit on an enemy to get the attack bonus. So that's why this bow is not going to be great for her, because a lot of your damage is damage over time. And you can't really guarantee that you get the last hit because you have your other cryo main DPS running around dealing damage too. And then it's not even clear if you'd get the attack bonus even if you last hit somebody with your ultimate while you are not on the field. So in general, not recommended. The royal weapons are never a good long-term investment because they're gonna fall off the better your gear gets. And that's it. I hope this video helped clear up some confusion about her role within the game and what she's supposed to be doing. I just want you to know what she was designed for and what she was not designed for so that you can avoid spending your money on something that's gonna disappoint you later on. If you want to melt headshots, use Child, he does it better. If you want to Deluke Slave, use Kaya or Diona. If you want a physical bow carry, use Fischl. And if you want a support, again, use Diona. Anyway, I'll stop here. Uh, if you're going for her, I wish you all the best on your pulls. If you have any questions, let me know, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.